New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Visit ryanfamily.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Ryan's Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins. In our last Sweet 16 show, previous NECP champion Dan Leggy takes on Steve Passant. Then in Game 2, Lou the X-Factor Albergini takes on defending champion Ray Weatherby. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. Welcome to New England Candle Pins in our 2016 Summer Series. We're here with our first two bowlers in our last Sweet 16 matchup. First of all, we're going to talk to Dan Legge. Dan, you've been on the show before. Welcome back. Good to be back. It's been, uh, I think I took last time off, but this time I'm ready to go. All right. How you been bowling recently? Good. I bowl here uh, Wednesday nights, and I bowl good here, so I'm ready. That's great. Uh, you are a regular bowler here at Ryan's Family Amusement, so you're familiar with the lanes, correct? Yep. Yeah, I come here every Wednesday night. Awesome, awesome. That's great. And a first-time bowler here uh, to New England Candle Pins is Steve Puzat. How you doing? Glad to be here. How'd I do on the name? Close enough. Tell me how it is. Poisant. Poisant. I told you I'd mess it up. Ah, hey, you're better than most. Well, at least I tried. So, I've messed Steve's name up. I haven't messed Dan's name up yet, but I will give it time. I've got 10 frames to do that. So, we're going to start with these two gentlemen off bowling our first match of today's show, and we'll be back with that match in just a moment. Welcome back to New England Candle Pins in our 2016 Summer Series. We're here with our first match of today's episode. And up first is Dan Leggy. Dan will start on lane one. Good luck, guys. And Dan starts off with one, two, four. I call that the shed door, one, two, four. There's a little bit of poetry. Sure yeah. is the head pin. Yeah, what would you call that, picking the lock? I mean, what was that? Not picking the lock. Are we just making lock. stuff it's up as we go along? Well, that's absolutely what we are. All right, well, I'm going to make up a 10 box for Dan Legge. You Bulls out of here. You go ahead and do that. Dan's a 124 average. He's got a high single of 182, high triple 445. Dan advertising on the back of his shirt, one of my favorite products, ice cream. He's advertising Ron's gourmet ice cream. I'm not a gourmet ice cream eater. Well, you would be if you've ever had Ron's. Well, maybe I would be. Jeremy knows what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, if someone would have brought me some. Huh. Well, you'll have to ask Dan for a little, a little hook up and about that. Oh, and that's a great 10. So it's a pair of 10s for Dan. That'll bring up our top overall seed, Steve Poison. Poison coming in with a 117 average, high single of 212, and a high triple of 462. And that's a way to start. That yeah. is. Qualified the number one seed with a 437. Throws a good ball on the one three. He's got the triangle left side, the two, four, and five pin. Two and the five. And kind of jumped on there. And ten marks. <clears throat> so 
Mikey off the head pin again. Leaves the one, one, four, seven, nine. Yes, sir. Sounds good to me. <laughs> but I'm thinking about that gourmet ice cream. No, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'd have to ask Jake Kovitz, but I think it's like the third best or third highest rated ice cream in the world or something along those lines. I did not know that. I'm not even kidding. I mean, that's it's it's good. Very good. You like ice cream? I love ice cream, as you may be able to tell. I mean, ice cream is, I mean, it's what you want. I mean, unless, of course, you're lactose intolerant. Which, I'm not. I'm sure they make ice cream for that. And ten pin, ten falls. pin falls. That's a great shot. The 4 7 tap. Throws the wood right over. And a nice spare for Leggett. Been hit. Yep, boys on. Nice nine drop. Oh, he sneaks the two. Wow. That may have taken the three pin with it if it were still standing. Can't be good. No, it's it's not great. A one eight nine. The only good part about that is you have the five pin to help you out. Yeah, the best you can hope for out of that is a ten box, which he proceeds to do. So that's good. Good use. I was going to say, Jeremy. Good use of the word proceeds. Go ahead, Richie. Oh no, I was gonna. I was also going to uh, compliment him on the use of the word proceeds. Two syllables is a lot for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's four. That's a lot. Thank you. I'm now an we're, athlete. Now we're working double time. That's a nine fill for Dan. Yeah, leaves it out right. Still got a clean sheet going, no pin standing. 59 at the half. On either side as well. Nobody's left a pin. That's correct, yep. This would be another nice 10 box. Ooh, he's done half the job. Now just the 3 6. Be happy with 20 if you can get out of it. And he does. That's a good ball. Good times. Steve, racing no time on that one. Both of these guys are really quick with their deliveries. Yeah. for the spare. Steve quickly dispatches of that triangle on the right side. Puts him at 62. So he's up three through six. Excuse me, through five. Plus the ball. That'll be five on the fill. Dispatches. Well done. I know, we're trying here. Yeah. We need a thesaurus. Gonna have to work for this 10 box.
So we've got ourselves a five pin match going through the last four frames. 74 69 in favor of Steve Poison. Here's the full horseman plus the nine. A little bit of help with the wood. Kind of push the head pin a little off the spot and it's touching. It'd be tough to carry all four of these. Kind of jumped in front. That was a tough one there for Dan. Another 10 bucks. I'll tell you, if he wins this match, it, it might come down to all those 10s that he's had. Yep. His third ball has been fantastic so far. It's one of the first things I was told bowling in adult leagues that 9s and 10s are what win matches. There's 10 there. And a timely 10 as well. You know what, that's the same thing, Jeremy, when we first started doing this show, uh, Richie and Dave Chestercove and Eddie Dunn said the same thing. Nines and tens are what wins. The spares will come, yeah. but worry about the pinning. Ten. That's a really big 10, too. That keeps his lead at five. Now Poison, looking opposite the strike here. Gonna maintain his lead. Off to the right, he leaves the one, two, seven, and 10. Not really a must make, but to maintain his lead, it sure is. Smooth ball, gonna, and he, if he oh, gets it. it in front of the oh. 10. He shaved a little bit too much off the bottom of that pin. Well, that had to be really close. From my angle, it was really close. Your angle is only slightly better than my angle. I'm just giving you it from my perspective. Looking for two. Trips out those two back pins. Makes the shot a lot easier. Just a three pin now for Dan. However, both your angles are better than my angle. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't really right since this is your place. <laughs> You're our host. Yeah, I just sit where I'm told. <laughs> or wherever the empty chair is. So that'll be 108 for Dan Leggett. Light on the head pin. Well, the nine falls. It's a two and the ten. Nine falls and stays in play, which actually, I mean, really helps in this situation. It oh. over. Oh. 118. 118 and a clean 118. So that will force Steve to mark at some point. Got a good chance at it here. He's got the three and the ten. Piece of wood on the three pin. Looks like it's going to guide it in there as long as he touches the three. So I have a question while that ball's being retrieved. His shot went all the way through, hit the back curtain. Bounce back out. The bounces back out, knocks a pin down. Still legal? Well, I mean, I don't think it actually hit the back curtain. I think it hit the wood and bounced upward. But either way, the ball was still in place. Still so good, any, right? Yeah, any pin good. it would have hit. It just has to, it has to make fair contact with a piece of wood. Okay. If he went through the hole and it hit the curtain and came back, then it's then it would not count. Right. He clipped the wood first, so that ball was still alive. Yeah. At any rate, he absolutely needs to make this. 
with 102 here in the ninth, and at the 5 8. to be. Maggie will advance. That's going to give him 118 to 112. 112 to 118. Wow. And Poison had the three to lead in marks, three marks to two marks. But Legge if, comes out with the win. Dan won with the those, those ten boxes gained him for five pins. He left, yeah. And he let Steve left four pins standing. Or five pins, that I say, right? Yeah. But pin to win. Enough to win. That's what it comes down to. You got a pin to win. Dan Legge with the clean game, the clean 118, wins by six. And we'll be back to talk to the bowlers in just a moment. Back with our bowlers. Uh, first of all, Steve. Ugly. It's been ugly for the last three weeks of bowling, so I was hoping it wasn't a carry over to today, but it did. What uh, What'd you feel was ugly about it? I just can't hit the object pin when I want to. Uh, it's been a struggle for the last three weeks, like I said, but just gonna keep on trying to get through it. Didn't happen. Congrats to him. And you, you only left a few pins, four or five pins standing, but that was the difference. Yeah, I missed a couple spares that I should have had. Should have had the one in the 10th, but yeah. he missed a couple too, so we both probably could have bowled a lot better, but didn't happen. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, great job. Thanks. It was fun having you here, and we hope to see you again I'll soon. Dan, you pulled it out. I did. I did. I thought those singles were, those, uh, were going to kill me. I missed three, three, two of them. Just fell right out of my hand while I bowled it, knew right away, and I was lucky enough to come away with a couple, couple pins. Yeah, squeaked it out. Yeah, you ended it was up. Not the prettiest match at all. It was ugly. It was you ugly. Ended up winning by six pins. You didn't leave any pins standing. Yeah, I'm lucky you didn't make that last spare. I thought you could have buried that, and then he was throwing, he was throwing a good ball, but at the beginning, and then I was just lucky enough to get a few pins. Well, hey, congratulations. You move on. Uh, you're going to take on the winner of the next match, uh, which we'll see momentarily uh, between uh, Lou Albergini and uh, Ray Weatherby. So stick around for that. We'll watch that match. Those guys will be up we'll, uh, next, and we'll talk to them in just a moment. What is community without community support? Without community access, without communication that creates a common bond. You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community. back with our bowlers for our second match of today's show. This is our last matchup in our Sweet 16. Uh, we're with Ray Weatherby, our defending champion, and Lou Albergini. First, Lou, how's everything going? Everything's going well. How you been bowling recently? Off and on, so see what happens. Absolutely. Uh, have you bowled against Ray recently? No, I bumped into Ray for years. You know, t other TV shows, roll-offs. So we've bumped into each other. Well, that's good. No one's gotten hurt. No. Good. Uh, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, Ray, you're back to defend your title. Yeah, I'll see what happens this time. There you go. You looking forward to go up against Lou? It'll be fun. Like I said, I've seen Lou. We've bumped into each other, like you said. So he knows how I bowl, and I know how he bowls. So. Well, we're looking forward to it. This is our last uh, Sweet 16 match. It's two big bowlers here. We're looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun, and we'll be back with that match in just a moment.
Welcome back to New England Candlepins. We're ready for our match between Ray Weatherby and Lou Albergini. Up first is Ray on lane one. Good luck, guys. Not even sure they hear me when they say that. No, but uh, the folks at home can hear you, and that's the most important yeah, you're part. Right. So at least they know you mean well, even though the bowlers probably hate you now. Now? It may have been before now. Oh, yeah, you had to interview him. That's true. That's right. Many shows ago. Well, Ray's not going to be very happy with you unless he gets out of this box here. You're making enemies here, Jerry. Yeah, Morgan. he's mad at me now. I believe Ray's our returning champion. Yep. Ray is our returning champion. Ray's a 119 average. His high single is a 199. His high triple is a 481. He pulls out of Colonial and Worcester. well-known to the program. So it's a 10 box for Ray Weatherby. Gives him 16 for two, and that'll bring up Lou Albergini. Also no stranger to our program. Tough break off the head pin. It's the 5-7-9. That is a tough one. He really buried the 1-2 on that. Not the way you want to start. Is right. Blue comes in, 116 average, high single of 214, and a high triple of 519. That's insane. Yeah. Those are some serious numbers. Start for late. Seven. Those pins just explode. He's going to try to go right by this wood here. And he does, right in the mouth. A spare there for Lou. Ray Weatherby leaves the five and the eight. The wood looked good initially, but if he goes too low, I'm not sure. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out for the 10. We'll wait another day. You know, I'd, I'd like to set that one up again. Get it going here. And the head pin again. Five, six, ten. Five, six, ten, and, and basically two options here. You can go really deep on the right, or you can go cap off the wall. He's going deep on the right, and he makes, makes it. A nice. shot. That's an excellent shot. Needed that one to get loose. Lou working on a spare here. And I drop a couple pieces of wood in front. You gotta be careful. I think just right at the pin should take it. Should be no problem. Nine and another for Albergini. Gives him a 13 pin advantage. Plus this ball, but he's opposite the spare. And again, 
Flashes them around. Leaves the 4 7. up pretty high and that's one of those ones you'd really like to have back but certainly no gimme so that'll put them at 54 through four and now Weatherby at 34 but he is on the mark Hedkin again Tough seven box. that Lou throws a couple of opens. There's still room in the match. It leaves nothing. Four, five, seven, ten. Mm. Decent effort into it. How much else you can do with that? Try to regroup and see if you can get one, maybe two here. The door is open. That's something Ray needed. Who needs to take advantage of it? Let's go. Boy, he's really blasting that head pin too. Both of our bowlers have been all over the head pin. Another really funky leave too. The two, nine, and ten. Absolutely nothing to show for it. Oh, really not much you can do with this either except throw it over. Oh, he, he was real close too. Yeah. One here ties the box. So we've still got a match on our hands. So it'll be 13 pins with four play. Ray Weatherby stepping on lane one with a 56. Well, it takes a couple marks to get started. That's all it is. Just missed the head pin, leaves the one, one nine. Could be the break he needs to get going here. that one by much. Back on it. Oh. Leaves the eight pin, piece of wood on the right. Eight pin still shaking. Pretty much a must make here for Weatherby. And oh, wow, he flipped the cap. 
one, one place not to go. throws the ball, barely hear it hit the ground. Right. Yeah, when he throws it smooth, it's awesome to see. So, a nine for Albertini. He's still up 12, opposite of 10 box. Still hasn't been able to quite put a hold on this match yet. Oh, definitely up for grabs. Off the head pin again. Oh wow, that's a weird one. You don't see that. You don't see that one, often at all. One five six. One five six with no wood. What a weird one. Nice idea. Plucks out just the one. The match is 11. Ray really needs one here. Got four horsemen and the seven. It'll be a tough one. Just misses the head. Yeah, that was close. Give it a run. Six. And a Ninety-five for Ray. Let's see, nineteen wins it. I'm oh, sorry, nine wins it. This is Dan Legging in the Elite Eight. So one more box for good measure for Lou Albertini. Always nice if you can sit on a, a late mark. And there it is. Get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> There's Lou. We have located Lou. There's the Lou we know and love. We have located Lou Albergini. Lou may have, Lou may have shut down the entire machinery. Just in case you didn't know where he was, we, we've located Lou. Don't worry about it. Heaven help us if it goes a bubble. Jer Jeremy, he may have shut down your entire mechanism back there. He we were having challenges on the other leg. This is why we can't <laughs> have nice things. Uh-oh. The two, four, seven, eight, nine. So, one fifteen to ninety five. Lou Albergini. 
winds, and we discovered where he was in the 10th frame. Well, we thought we lost him for a second. I mean, there were a lot of open boxes from both guys, and, um, and then he showed. We found him. We, we found that him. we did. He was right so, there the whole time. We'll be back to talk to Ray and the newly found Lou Albertini in just a moment. Welcome back. We're here with our bowlers from our second match at today's Sweet 16 matchup. Uh, first of all, Ray, just seemed to be a little off on uh, the head pin there. Yeah, either I hit it too full or I didn't hit it at all. Like, and I missed a couple of easy spares, but eh, it's bowling. Yeah, what that's a, that's the way it goes. Yeah, you, you, a couple of times on the spares, you just, you just seem to be... The one place you don't hit it, I hit it. So. Yeah. And that's just sometimes how this game goes. Yeah, that's that's bowling. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, and you were up against Lou. He started off great, a little off in the middle, and then at the end he came right back. Yeah, I was kind of expecting to throw that bomb at the end just to get a little frustration out. Absolutely, just and, a little. and that's and that's when Lou came back. And that's and that Ray rather be quoted that perfectly right. That noise is for frustration when you throw a strike like that because then you wonder why every other box you throw the ball in there and you can't get nothing to shoot at like Ray was shooting. Right. You know, he had a couple bad woods up there, uh, one misplayed early, and he capped a single, and who knows if he makes those two, it's a different game. So Absolutely. Know, that's the way bowling goes, like he said. Yeah, the one he capped in the eighth frame, that was just, yep. as you said. Yeah, he gets there and he throws a, a spare strike on it or a strike spare on and then all of a sudden I have to mock. Right. And, you know, advantage to him. So, you know, he... Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Fortunately, it worked out for me. Yeah. And then you, you, the strike there in the 10th, you could tell just letting it out, yeah. the frustration. Yeah, it's a lot of candle pin bowling. I, I, I've been doing it for 40 years now. It, there's a lot of frustration. You don't have enough good moments. <laughs> so it's always good to celebrate when you do something good up there. But you have enough of the good moments that you've kept doing it for 40 years. Yeah, yes, sir. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, congratulations to Lou. Hey, still won it last time. You, you're our defending champion for a little more time. And uh, we'll be back next time with Lou. We'll be taking off, moving on to the Elite Eight. So that'll do it for this show. So I'm just going to say thanks to everybody, and we'll wrap it up. Take care. Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. Visit ryanfamily.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.